My name is Rosina. I'm a banker, I'm a biker, an event planner. I let one out. <laughs> Salsa dancer. Let's go again, don't worry. You will learn a thing, oh baby. I am a banker. I am a biker, an event planner, a salsa dancer, and also a relationship expert. Hello, once again, this is your girl, Salsa Rosie, and you're welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your banker, your biker, your salsa instructor, salsa dancer, event planner, and relationship coach. Thank you all for those of you who have subscribed so far. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do subscribe and make sure you hit the notification button for more details. Now this week, I'm coming your way with something very exciting. Now, most of the time, this is something that a lot of young people look up to. Every young person or most young people at least look forward to getting married someday. It's a dream to get married to a right person, the right partner and enjoy marriage. However, there are some basic things you need to consider. You need to be comfortable with, you need to do before you actually say I do to that person that you want to spend the rest of your time with. Now, what am I talking about? We're talking about several things, but let's begin with the first one, which is before you decide to get married, you need to in yourself be an individual who is wholesome what do i mean by that so usually people tend to want to get into relationships to complete them they want to get married to a man so that they can have a rich life they want to get married to a woman so their home can be taken care of they want to get married for so many reasons but as an individual you need to be wholesome in yourself you need to be able to live you need to, be able to know your purpose for life you need to be able to be able to take care of yourself and take care of others before you can decide to be in a marriage because usually people tend to think that marriage is there to make your life better but no marriage is too complete emphasis on complete two complete individuals coming together wanting to spend their lives together to, so that they can have a better life okay so basically before you get married you need to make sure that you as an individual you are physically present you are mentally you know present you are financially present you are socially present and you are emotionally present before you can decide to get engaged with somebody else because when you don't do that what happens is that you become a burden in the relationship because you are looking for validation you are looking for completion you are looking for somebody to sort of like make you complete so it's important that you are complete as a person before you decide to say the word i do to that other young man or young woman as in before you get married now what else do you need to look out for when you want to get married or what else do you need to do before you get married or you say that i do you need to discuss your finances most of the time people find it difficult to discuss finances um, who pays what who does what how the finances are going to be managed even in some cases in terms of your careers what careers you're going to do we have instances right after you get married the man says look i need you to be able to take care of my children at home so quit work, I'm going to provide for the whole family. Now in that case, what is the context of his provision for the family? Is he going to pay you monthly stipends to be able to take care of the house? Or he's going to be able to provide for you whatever you need as and when you ask? All of these things have to be discussed. So then you decide how much of money goes into house, whether you're living in a rented apartment, whether you want to build a house in the future, how to put funds aside for certain things. These things are often looked you know no, looked over because everybody assumes that well it's a man's duty to provide this to provide that it's a woman's duty to take care of the kids and do that but you realize that most of the time when these issues are not properly discussed it makes the marriage noisy because when responsibility starts then you see a lot of arguments about what daddy needs to do what mommy needs to do what the man needs to do what the woman needs to do so it's important that some of these issues are discussed extensively also one other thing we need to look at is to discuss the family. When you're getting ready to marry somebody, it's important that you discuss certain things, i.e., for instance, assuming you were to have kids, how many kids would you want to have? Some people want very small families. Others want very large families for whatever reason. Others want maybe a boy at all costs. Others want a girl at all costs. Others want to decide where their children will go to school, where they are going to live, where they are not going to live. All these things need to be discussed because you realize that most of the time, once you get married, the children start coming into the picture. Sometimes even the school to attend can become a problem, you know. So some of these things, you need to discuss them ahead to know how you want to engage your family as and when it grows, when you get married, especially with the number of kids you want to have. Because trust me, that's an issue because I know of instances where 
the woman wants to have two children, the man wants a large family and justifies it by having more children outside because that's what they want. Or the woman having um, uh, the woman wanting more children and therefore just allowing herself to get pregnant so that she can achieve the more children and then it becomes a financial burden on the family. So it's important that both of you discuss the size of your family before you start actually saying I do to each other. The next thing I want to talk about is the part that your in-laws play in your home. Now this is a very sensitive part, okay? So most of the time people get married and then a few months down the line, oh, my mother has come to live with me, my, especially after childbirth. You know, we have situations where um, the, either the lady's mother or the gentleman's mother comes to stay to help with the bringing up of a baby when the baby is born. And then for some reason refuses to go away. And they just keep staying there, keep staying, they keep coming. And then your siblings are coming to spend time. These things seem to be discussed because sometimes it actually brings a lot of noise because there are some people that want to enjoy the privacy of their families that they are bringing and then the other people who have lived their lives in a very communal way where they are okay with their aunties, their sisters, their siblings all living in one place. So sometimes some of these things need to be discussed and so that when the time comes and for instance a family member comes to stay for a reason and is expected to go it doesn't look as if one party is being wicked or one party is being mean. So the part that the in-laws play is very, very important. The amount of room you give the in-laws to even interfere in your affairs is very important because sometimes some of these things, it may have good meaning in the beginning, but as time goes on, it can actually bring a lot of noise. That is if it's something that has not been discussed thoroughly. Another thing that you need to look at before you say I do is um, where you stand when it comes to your spirituality the faith you share what you believe in and then your goals because it's okay to be physically in tune it's okay to be emotionally in tune financially in tune everything but if spiritually you can't agree on maybe what religion you are to have in the house and all of that you realize that in the beginning you can actually begin by saying you know what you practice what you want to do let me practice what i want to do but over time you realize that things begin to conflict especially when you have a partner who is not accommodating of what you share of what you believe in so it's important that um you 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 you, you nurture these things because sometimes it also dovetails into what your children believe because you get to a stage where you begin to confuse your children as to what they need to do or what they don't need to do so it's important that before you say i do make sure that you are spiritually compatible with your partner don't share too much divergent views don't don't be at opposing ends when it comes to your religion or spirituality because that's important that lies on your very faith or what you believe in so it's important that um, when you're getting married you make sure that you're spiritually in tune with your partner now the next thing is that before you say I do, it's important that you don't have any ex hangovers. What do I mean by ex hangovers? You know, when you have a partner who had an immediate ex or yourself, you have an immediate ex and you know it wasn't quite over, you didn't quite get closure, the person is still in proximity, it's still somebody you call, maybe work with or do something. It's important that you make sure that all those things are over because sometimes because of the edge to quickly want to get married, you realize that you think that some of these things are not important. You tend to accommodate some of these things. But the problem is that after the marriage occurs, sometimes these things begin to stare you in the face because there's this issue about, oh, but you know we talk and it wasn't a problem for you, so why is it a problem for you now? Or maybe me and this person have been friends for 10 years, even before I met you, so why would there be a problem now if I'm just engaging? I know their family very well and all sorts. So sometimes make sure that you don't have any ex hangovers. If there's somebody in the picture of your partner, if there's an ex in your, in your partner's life and you don't feel too sure about it, make sure this issue is discussed and settled before you decide to say I do. It's important not to have anything clouding your imagination or clouding your mind before you say i do it's important so that you can get into that marriage with a very happy heart okay the last but not the least it is important to be sexually attracted to your partner before you say i do what do i mean by that you should be able to share very wonderful intimate moments you should like his look you should like his aura you should like his personality or you should like her personality you should like her aura you should like how she smells there should be a complete intimacy around both of you because you see sometimes 
people think that yes this person checks the box this person is the right person for my home she can cook she can clean she can take care of the children she can manage my home oh yes he he earns so much money he can provide anything i want we'll be living in a big house in a big mansion but it's important that you actually truly like the person you're going to say i do with somebody that you don't want to wake up in the morning look at his face and cringe you don't want to wake up in the morning, look at his face and, and have to imagine somebody else in order to have him hold you. So it's important. I'm not promoting sex before marriage. But what I'm saying is that it's important to make sure that both of you are compatible intimately before you say I do. Because if you are not, somewhere down the line, you're going to have a lot of problems with the bedroom or getting intimate with each other. So there we have it. Some of the basic things you need to consider before you actually say I do to that young lady or to that young gentleman so that you can have an amazing marriage. Thank you. If you do like this, don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notification button so that you can get more of this content every week. Thank you. Or every day, whatever. Is it okay? Okay. Also, Rosie.